Welcome to Julian's lab. What I'd like to do today is to set up a client SSL VPN on a FortiGate 5.6. As you can see, I have a FortiGate 60D and I'm on 5.62. And I'll move on with the first step. And the first step is to create a username in the user group to be assigned. Now, why would you be watching my SSL VPN setup? and not FortiGate where you can watch their theirs too. I'm going to be adding a lot of extra details that FortiGate managed to skip through. So I'll get going SSL VPN group and I'll go I'm going to add my username that I already created. So I have a group and a username on that group that is going to be part of my SSL VPN client. Now on the second step we're going to enable the SSL VPN portal and that's under VPN, SSL VPN portal and we're going to work with SSL I'm sorry with the full access portal which I'm going to edit. Now here there are a few details that I'll like to discuss this enables split tunneling if you enable that um, so I'll go over what split tunnel and full, full tunnel mode means. Now full tunnel means once you VPN in, you're forcing all the traffic through this firewall that I'm setting up right now. So if you're doing split tunnel mode, it means that just the private traffic that is on this source IP pools, you're going to be able to access, access, I'm sorry, all the public traffic is going to be going through your local router or firewall. So if you're at your home or hotel, that's how you're going to be browsing the traffic which is less secure so our preferred option is going to be not to enable split tunneling so we can force all the traffic through the firewall and we can get the benefit of all the UTM features and the security that the firewall is offering so that will be my preferred option. So here we just need to make a note about the address object that is being used and we can leave pretty much everything by default uh, with a quick mention that enable 40 client download it literally means you can log into the firewall public IP and download the client from the firewall himself, not necessarily from the FortiGate website. Next, on the SSL VPN settings, I'll go over a few details. So, the interface that the client VPN is going to be listening onto, which typically is going to be our public IP, public interface with the public IP, and the port. Um, we want to change that from the management port of the firewall 10403 is going to be a good choice and as you can see the firewall is already pre-filling this line for us and is letting us know how can we connect against the public IP and the port now restrict access limit access to specific hosts means you can create here let's just say certain public IPs that you're allowing that this port and IP to be accessed onto. So what I'm trying to say with that is let's just say if you are in United States and you create a geo IP and you're blocking all the countries except USA, you can use that geo, geo IP filtering right right there. If you're going to choose allow access from any host, literally means anyone is going to be able to let's just say if they do a port scan they're going to see this port open on this IP so they might be able to try um, um, a brute force you know the username and password now enable this idle logout um, what that means here the 300 seconds so the five minutes if the firewall doesn't see any traffic is going to log that user out but one more time, it's not on the keyboard movement or mouse movement like my mouse right now. It's actually on the traffic. So if you're doing the tunnel all, any broadcast that your machine does, the firewall is going to see. So you're not going to go idle, never ever. So I'm changing that to, let's just say, one hour. And one more time, that actually means never if your computer does any kind of broadcast. On a side note here, there is another timer that you cannot see. And what this timer does, it's called 
authentication timeout that means from the moment that the user is getting logged in a timer starts going by default this timer is set up at eight hours and you can change that and the settings are hidden under config VPN SSL settings and the command for the timeout is set out timeout and here you can set up your number of seconds so in my case 36,000 seconds it's 10 hours you also have to type end in order to apply the settings up above now down below um, we like to specify the same adverse object that was being selected on the portal we want to make sure that it's matching because if it's not obviously your VPN client is not going to work um, DNS you can use the system DNS I do recommend that you use like an internal DNS at least you can have at least no you can have three DNS servers so two you can add here uh, the third one you can go on the command line and add it via CLI and the last part here on the SSL VPN settings we have to add here the group that we created the SSL VPN group and the portal that we just set up apply and move on with the next step now this create routes for VPN uh, we need to identify the other subject that was being used on the portal in VPN settings and we can see the other subject name in the network so I need to match this route pointing to the SSL VPN so I'll go to network static routes add create new adding the address object the network that is matching the address object that we just checked moments ago choosing the interface where this network lives where it's residing uh, gateway is not needed you can put the comment SSL VPN and that's pretty much it with this step so we can see our address object pointing back to the SSL VPN Root. now under policies and object IPv4 policy we need to create two policies one for accessing the local traffic so from VPN to LAN another one accessing from VPN to WAN since we have done not the split tunnel but we've done the tunnel all I'll start with VPN to LAN so my incoming interface is going to be the SSL VPN you can put the name SSL VPN to LAN incoming interface obviously my SSL VPN the other one is going to be my LAN source um, needs to be the address object SSL VPN address object and we need to specify a user group the one that we've been working with destination is going to be my LAN network so my 10.0 what ports you want to allow typically all should be just fine now I'll spend some time over this NAT, NAT checkbox here um, so if you disable this box you're going to allow this traffic this 10.212 to access your 10. network or any other network that you might have behind this firewall with this private IP 10.212.134 okay if you do enable this NAT checkbox it says use outgoing interface address which that means you're going to be browsing with the private IP of the firewall so in my case 10.0.0.19 so when I'm VPN in from my home let's just say and if I need to access inside of my network here I'll see that 10.0.0.19 it's accessing whatever resources you're having behind this firewall so it's up to you how we're going to use this NAT so um, down below all the UTM features that you need to enable as needed you know as secure as you want to be 
a comment in all session if you need to see the traffic on the on the login report. Now I'll be creating the other policy, so from SSL VPN to WAN. I'll be naming this one SSL VPN to WAN. Incoming interface also is going to be the same SSL VPN interface, outgoing the WAN interface, and I'll just make this quick notes. Um, if you need to access something on a DMZ or Wi-Fi or if you have any other interfaces, keep in mind if you don't build a policy the VPN client is not going to be able to access those resources so you need to build uh, all, all the other policies that, that you need so um, so SSL VPN to win source same address subject that we create or we used earlier with the same user group and destination um, any I'm sorry, all and what ports you want to use. So, in instance, if you want to just give web traffic access to the VPN user, that should be fine. So, I'm going to use all in my case. And here, the NAT tick box is not an option. I mean, obviously, if you're going to come from VPN with the private IP address that is being assigned to you and you know you need to go on the internet you need to be hiding behind the firewall and all the UTM features that the firewall is providing you know that include includes web filter IPS and, and so forth whatever your security settings must be so here are my two policies SSL VPN to win and to win and now I guess we need to go to the final part which is to be, be doing like now test. how can we test real quick without installing the client we go to VPN and SSL VPN settings we figure out what public IP we have listed here in the port um, and if you go to that public IP and uh, in the port you should be getting a login prompt if all the setup went well you log in and this should be successful and as you can see I'm being logged in and now in order to actually use this in a proper way you should be downloading the client like I said either from this portal or from FortiGate website is the same one or from the website you might get the latest one and then you can do a, a full test and actually using um, the tunnel mode that is so before I wrap up my video I like to go under configure VPN SSL settings I'll do a quick show and what I want to emphasize here, set source interface is the interface that your SSL VPN is going to be listening. In my case, is uh, internal six. In your case, might be WAN one. If you have more than one, you need to have both in here. Um, also, like from a practical perspective, once you VPN in, I want you to think more like um, DHCP, and you need to assign. Um, DNS suffix which is and I don't have that in just yet command is set DNS suffix and whatever your local domain is and now if I'll do a show um, you can see set DNS suffix so your, your client is going to get this um, domain whenever they ping some local resource along with the local DNS whatever that might be so I just wanna say thank you for watching